History is lived forward, the English historian C. V. Wedgwood perceptively noted, but it is written in retrospect. We know the end before we consider the beginning, and we can never wholly recapture what it was like to know the beginning only. This cognitive constraint is particularly compelling in a study of the U.S. Army between the two world wars. Conditioned by the reality of World War II and some fifty years of a large standing post war army, we find it too easy to assume we know what needs to be analyzed. The most familiar version of the Army's fate during the interwar era suggests that although it endeavored to maintain its readiness, the Army was unprepared for the enormous demands of World War II. A miserly Congress, supported by a peace minded and isolationist American public, denied it the funds and personnel needed to maintain an adequate military establishment. The official history of the U.S. Army emphasized that this public and official malaise had dire consequences. The Army became tragically insufficient and incapable of restoration save after the loss of many lives and the expenditure of other resources beyond man's comprehension. In short, as a contemporary historian has noted, although many dedicated individual professional soldiers had, during the 1920s and 1930s, conscientiously studied to be ready for the next war, decline, neglect, and stagnation marked America's military forces. This view of the origins of the Army's unpreparedness at the beginning of World War II is important for at least three reasons. First, the successes of World War II are the bedrock on which existing American military doctrines are constructed. Second, the high costs of American unpreparedness at the beginning of World War II served to justify large standing military forces and their associated defense budgets in the post-war years. Third, the lessons of the interwar era provide compelling arguments to avoid the dismantling and neglect of American defense institutions at the end of the Cold War. Thus, the interwar period is frequently cast as one analogous to the present post-Cold War era, with its ambiguous threats to American security and concomitant demands for cuts in defense spending and smaller military forces. In this book, I present a different perspective on the interwar army. I argue that internal barriers to change and the myopic vision of single-issue constituencies contributed significantly to the army's unpreparedness for World War II, perhaps more so than the external challenges. Even though the army faced severe resource constraints, it also had intellectual and institutional deficits that exacerbated shortfalls in money and personnel. I focus on the adaptation of the U.S. Army to the realities of modern war by analyzing how the Army responded to two technologies that had demonstrated their military utility in World War I, the tank and the airplane. The military forces of France, Great Britain, Germany, and the United States had all experimented with tanks and airplanes on the Western Front. During the two decades that followed the Great War, these nations and others grappled with the implications of these new weapons and debated the means by which the technologies would be assimilated into their military institutions. From the conceptual choices, tank and airplane doctrines and designs emerged. The results varied from country to country.